Hi friends, today we're going to read the Bernstein Bears uh, Trick or Treat. So it is almost that time, isn't it? Just a few more days before it's time for Trick or Treat. All right, the Bernstein Bears Trick or Treat. The sights and sounds of autumn were all around as Mama Bear pushed her shopping cart along the path that led to the Bear family's treehouse. The trees and shrubs were ablaze with color. Farmer Ben's pumpkins stood bright orange in the October sun. The crows cawed, no cawed noisily as they searched the stubble for bits of corn. Wild geese in great V formations honked high in the sky as they flew south. But the surest sign of the season was inside the treehouse, hiding behind Papa Bear's easy chair. It was Brother Bear waiting to try out his Halloween costume on Mama. It wasn't Halloween yet, but brother and sister couldn't wait to try on their new costumes. Sister was going to be a beautiful ballerina. Well, what do you think, she asked, taking the third position. Shh, said brother. Mama's coming. Brother had chosen to be a spooky monster on Halloween. He had bought the spookiest monster mask he could find, and Mama made the rest of the costume. Boo, he shouted as Mama came in with the groceries. Help, a monster, she cried, pretending to be frightened. It's only me, Mama, he said, showing his face. So it is, said Mama. Well, that just goes to show that appearances can be deceiving. Appearances can be deceiving. What's that mean, asked sister. It's just a grown-up way of saying that things aren't always what they look like, explained Mama as she unpacked the groceries. Look, goodies, said brother. Hands off, please, said Mama. Those are for the trick-or-treaters who come to our house tomorrow night. You have candy like that in your house right now that you can't touch? Yeah. Brother and sister were very excited about Halloween and a little nervous, too. This was the first year they would go, be going trick-or-treating without a grown-up along to supervise. I like the idea of them going by themselves, said Papa, as he carved the pumpkin he got from Farmer Ben. It's pretty spooky out there, he added, making a scary face at the cows. Oh, he says, I'm not, I'm, I read that wrong. I'm so sorry. It says, I'm not so sure I like the idea of them going by themselves. Now, Papa, said Mama, if brother and sister want to accept the challenge of going out on their own, I think we should encourage them. But remember, she continued turning to the cubs, there'll be strict rules. You'll stay in your own neighborhood and you won't eat any of the treats until you're back home. Bes besides, said brother, we won't really be by ourselves. We made a trick-or-treat date with cousin Freddie, Lizzie Brune, and Queenie McBear. Can you think of another um, rule about Halloween that you should follow? Hmm. Sometimes if you're in a dark area, it's nice to have like a um, something that lights up a little flashlight or maybe a glow stick so that cars can see you. And you should never zigzag across the street. Right. Yeah. That could be dangerous. Stay on one side until you're done and then go to the other side. All right. There, said Papa, putting the finishing touches on the jack lantern. Then he lit a candle inside it and turned out all the lights. It was pretty scary. The next day, brother and sister began planning the trick-or-treat route they'd follow that night. Brother got a pencil and paper and made a map of the neighborhood. That's a good idea. That way, he explained, they wouldn't miss anyone. Let's see now, he said. We'll stop at our houses first. Ours, Freddy's, Lizzie's, and Queenie's. Then we'll do Farmer Ben's and our sitters, Mrs. Grizzle. Mrs. Grizzle for sure, agreed sister. She usually makes special Halloween cookies. And teacher Jane, she gives out good stuff. How about Dr. Grizzly, asked brother. She's into health snacks. I think so, just to be polite, said sis. Gramps and Gran, of course. Of course. I'll tell you one place we're going to miss, said brother, folding his map. What place is that, asked sister. That one, he answered, pointing out the window at the home of old Ms. McGriz. It was a spooky, twisted old treehouse in a thicket at the end of Crooked Lane. We're definitely not going there, he added with a shiver. Why ever not, asked Mama, who was listening. Why not, said the cubs, because she's a witch. That's why not. What utter nonsense, protested Mama. True, Ms. McGriz is old and bent and rather forbidding looking, but I can assure you she's a perfectly nice person. But the cubs didn't believe her, not for a minute. They knew better. Everybody knew better. No doubt about it, Ms. McGriz was a witch for sure. Just after dark, a pirate, a skeleton, and the wicked queen from Snow White came for brother and sister. They were Freddy, Lizzie, and Queenie, of course, and together they ventured out into the darkness with their trick-or-treat bags. Before they could get started collecting Halloween goodies, they were joined by some worrisome company. 
Too Tall Grizzly and his gang out for mischief. Too Tall didn't waste any time trying to get brother, sister, and their friends to go along with him and his gang. Come on, we'll show you goody goodies how to have some real Halloween fun, he said, pulling brother along with them. What sort of fun, asked brother warily. Oh, you might say we're going to put the trick back in trick or treat, he said, chuckling. It was so dark that brother and the others didn't notice where they were heading. Hey, said sister, this is Crooked Lane. That's right, said Too Tall. We're going to play a few tricks on old witch McGriz. What sort of tricks, asked brother. Her gnarled, twisted old treehouse loomed ahead. First, whispered Too Tall, taking a roll of toilet paper from his jacket. We'll decorate her house with a little of this. Then maybe we'll tie a few knots in her clothesline. Then smear some honey on her broomstick so she'll stick to it when she tries to fly. Before Too Tall and his gang could start their mischief, the front door opened and a bright yellow light stabbed the darkness. And there in the doorway stood the frightening figure of old Ms. McGriz. Aha, she said in a gravelly voice. I'm ready for you. She then led the terrified cubs into a cozy living room. To their great surprise, there was a big tray of beautiful candy apples, all prepared for Halloween visitors. Mama was right, whispered sister to brother. Miss McGriz really is a sweet, kind old person. The cubs thanked her for the beautiful apples and went about the rest of their trick-or-treat business. Yeah, so it wouldn't have been very nice if they'd done tricks to her, would it? No. And if she's if she's older, it would be hard for her to clean up all that, wouldn't it? Yeah. But do you think they should have went into her house? Hmm. I don't know. There was a lot of them. So, I mean, that makes it a little better. But I don't think it's always safe to go into a stranger's house. It's better to wait on the front step. Later that evening, brother and sister were at home looking over all the treats they had collected. The beautiful candy apples stood out and Papa asked where they came from. From Ms. McGriz, answered brother. From that scary looking old grouch puss that lives down Crooked Lane, said Papa. That's right, said Brother, taking a delicious bite of his candy apple. You really must try to remember, Papa, said Sister, giving her apple a little lick. Appearances can be quite deceiving. <laughs> so they learned that, didn't they? They thought that she was not a nice person because she was older and she was kind of hunched over and stuff. But really, she was very nice. That's, you know, just what happens sometimes, right? Your body gets gets all bent over sometimes and maybe you are in a little bit of pain. So sometimes maybe you might be a little cranky, but she was very nice. Yeah. And she had great candy apples. So I think they learned a good lesson. All right. Well, I hope that whatever you do uh, in the next few days to get ready for Halloween, I hope it goes really well. And I hope you get your costumes all ready if you're going out. And if you're not going out, maybe you're going to help at the door. Uh, that's great too. Then you'll get to see everybody else and what they're wearing. All right. I hope you have a great day, friends. Bye-bye.